how do you teach in the more hybrid and mixed mode kind of ways, where you might have some students on campus, some students off campus, you might be prepared to meet with your students in person in some circumstances, but maybe not in quite the way that you used to do that. You might have students who go into two-week quarantines at random points during the term. You might have students who get very ill at different points during the term. I think the biggest challenge was the labs because we had to redo them completely, you know, and, and re-envision the course, you know, was the bottom line. I think the biggest adaptation is getting used to the fact that in these COVID times, social distancing is so important. In a normal situation, I would be right next to the students, showing them how to get head, whereas now in COVID, I tend to stand off to one side uh, and sort of direct to the students. There are less nuances. You have to be more specific and more organized and more just more concrete. I would not wish this pandemic on any world, <laughs> and yet we have to we have to be creative. You know that's what the human spirit is about: is to be creative. Traditionally, in this course in Geology 110, we get in vans and we go to the local geology around. And so this year, where we couldn't get in vans, it was like, huh, what are we going to do? And decided, well, let's take advantage of the of the R. Having a lab with the lab part in person, you know, granted mask and socially distanced, makes a ton of difference because then you, you, you just feel like you get to know the students better because you see them in person once a week. Our engineer who does all the programming, he came up with this great plan where the students are all sitting now. 10 feet apart in both Crakeham and the, the rehearsal space behind Crakeham. Those two spaces are connected via headphones and then the conductors are in the green room and the students can see us on the screen. We're essentially teaching them a whole new skill, which is to learn how to record. Making videos has turned out to be a very different and marvelous way of looking at these objects. And I did not realize how much more you would see if you were forced to just kind of follow a camera, looking across the image and across the image. And it really leads to a deeper, more intentional, more systematic kind of looking that I think is very valuable. In some ways, by having the students physically separated, it enforces their roles even more. The person working on the apparatus has to work on the apparatus because there's physically nobody else present. And the person who's doing the data analysis, yes, they can get help from their peers virtually, but they're the ones who are still doing the work. This helps address issues of bias that can occur in the lab. This can also address issues of, again, students sort of um, handing off their responsibilities to another student because they don't feel comfortable. You know, I, I, I think we're definitely not going to go back to the way we used to teach. I mean, we are, but we're going to have more tools now, you know, because I think we did it well in the past. But I think, you know, the one silver lining is that um, we have figured other things out that work quite well, actually. Thank you very much. If anything, it has really reinforced our, our, what we knew already, which is that learning is a very social endeavor. And that learning in company with other people uh, is important. That it does things for you that learning by yourself just cannot do.